is not a good place for questions if you feel here like in heaven. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have ordinary questions. <laughs> in the form of experience, experience all the yeah. experiences are manolaya. What is mano nasa? You can say it's the unmanifested, it's the unmanifested. Anma? Unmanifested. Um, but we think like that, that is not. <laughs> the, no statement. If you are free from manolaya, it is mano nasa. So the freedom from manolaya is mano nasa. And mono nasa included mono laya. Monolaya is included in Mononasa, no? No, Manolaya is something, when it is over, the Manolaya is there. Because so the Manolaya, Manonasa is the ocean, and the Manolaya is the wave. And it the comes experience. one after another, and out of it goes away. So when it goes away, the ocean is there. When, the, when Manolaya comes, it is just like a wave. Mm -hmm. Wave after wave it is coming, and the wave goes away. The going away of the waves is Manonasa. The, the natural state is Manonasa. Which cannot be uh, There is nothing to, uh, there is no... Uh, no feeling. No feeling. No, uh, if you feel something, it's already Manonasa. Mono yeah. Whatever we feel, it is Manonasa. So is Manonasa, is like the awareness? Not bring on awareness, but it, it is just like awareness. Just like awareness. We may say it is uh, awareness, but it is not at all. We need not connect the word awareness with that. Mm -hmm. Awareness is a tricky word. Mm -hmm. I think it's not so <laughs> suitable. <laughs> but, uh, but if you understand the meaning, that is okay. It's so just another we, language. We consider it as a everything. If, uh, so no mind state. Another way. Uh, there is no information. There is no without any information, the mind is there. So the mind without any information, without any movement, or any expression, it is the mind. Uh, the pure the state of mind is monomasa. When the mind without any experience yeah. is it. Without expression. Without expression. So what what is means these these words or in which language? Uh, Sanskrit. 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 What it means, Manorasa? Manorasa means, means uh, uh, nothingness. The end of everything. Mano is mind. No mind. No mind space. Mano nasa. Mano nasa. The other one is mano. Laya. 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 Shape of mind. The simple state of mind is Manonasa. Mm -hmm. the, the, with, mind with shape is Manolaya. Mm -hmm. Manolaya is like ice and Manonasa is like free water. Water. Water, water is Manonasa. Uh, some uh, frozen state of ice. Uh, ice peace uh, is Manolaya. When it becomes water, it is water. There is no addition. Mm -hmm. Then um, it, it, it takes the whole uh, all of a uh, ice piece, it takes a shape. Uh, so, so taking a shape of mano, mind, it is mano laya. And you did with uh, free from the shape is mano nasha. So put this in our daily life, it means we are the waves. Mm. And enlightenment would mean that we are conscious, we are the waves, 
at the ocean. So we should always know that we are the still ocean below, but acting now as, as its waves, because it's the same thing. The wave is not different from the ocean. So we may not uh, think like that. Oh, wave is not uh, away from the ocean. We may not think like that. We have to. Uh, we should not uh, catch hold of any ocean forever. Oh, we cannot catch hold of any waves forever. You, we have to allow it to disappear. Uh, so that is enough. We need not uh, consider the ocean uh, because in our language we know only the waves alone. We do not know that there is not at all a waveless state. So what we know is only the waves. And uh, we should not give importance to the waves. When we do not give importance to the waves, the waves disappear. So the appearance of the disappearance of the waves alone is the healthy state. So if you try to catch hold of any wave forever, that is the but problem. If, if I don't know that I'm a wave, I don't know where I belong to, Letting the wave to go away is like being able to die because I know only the wave and the wave. If the wave goes away, I die. So it is the each and every moment will die. But, uh, but we renew it uh, because of our memory pattern, we survive. We, because of the memory pattern alone, we, we give a link to the... Uh, even though we, uh, we are dying moment by moment, we are uh, thinking that we know. Uh, we are, because of the memory, we are continuing to be in life. Uh, even though we die each and every moment, but we, but the whole, but the, the dying is the healthy state. So in moment, whatever comes, it has to go. Then only it is the healthy state. Uh, so even the nature itself is like this. Uh, for example, whenever you uh, look upon the mirror, the image will be there. If it is permanently there, uh, nobody, no other can look there in the image. So whatever comes, it has to go. There should not be any fixed place for anything. So whatever comes, it has to go. So in this way, our mind must be also in a flowing state. Uh, one thing it may take a shape, the next thing it must be free from the shape. So it is uh, moment by moment it must be new. Yeah, but here is the trick that we are clinging to to stay with the wave because we don't know anything else. We, we are afraid, that's the main uh, feeling we have. We are afraid of dying. We are afraid that we will die, no? That's the, that's the human uh, nature. We are afraid of dying. Why well, yeah, I am not? <laughs> but it is not, not. It is not the real death. But it is so, so actually it is the uh, disappearance of thought. So we know every day, uh, each and every moment, um, the thought appears and disappears. Uh, but in, um, we may also say it is the death of thought. The death of I am means the death of the thought alone, not uh, more than that. But see, even though the, the thought comes uh, repeatedly, a new one, the old uh, goes away, old dies, and the new alone comes, and uh, we feel it is not at all a death. But in strictly speaking, it is a real death. Mm -hmm. But um, momentarily, the new thought alone comes, the old thought dies. So that's the meaning behind that. Mm, but if you, you are not afraid of that, I am dying. <laughs> uh, we are not. We are not consciously afraid. We are just. It's, it's in us. It's, yeah. it's a survival of these things. Bhagavan, but Malalaya and Mananas they came in the same time together. Or it's like uh, first comes one after the second. My no, no, period. One after the second. Okay. One yeah. after second. There yeah. cannot be two monolayas at a moment. Each and every moment, a single monolaya alone will be there. Mm -hmm. And is it infinite process? It, it is a? Infinite. An infinite process. Mm -hmm. It is an infinite process. So this is never stop. Yeah, it's uh, like... never stop. 
if you uh, achieve enlightenment after you should again to go in a form as a consciousness. Other consciousness, uh, other consciousness means. Um, so the monolaya itself is the consciousness. So after enlightenment, he asked him if you have to take another. No, even uh, but in the in the enlightenment, you are given freedom to the monolaya. Uh, that means if the appearance and disappearance is the natural state. So what comes mm. that has to go. So that is the when we when when you are interested to push away any manolaya and retain some manolaya, that is the problem. So when we understand we have no business there, uh, it is also the one of the manolaya also uh, understand like this. The, the understanding itself is a is a form of is a part of manolaya. Only because of because all our thinking, all our thought is manolaya. Our conclusion is manolaya. But with this conclusion helps, this manolaya helps to deal with the manolaya. How to deal with our manolaya? Otherwise we are uh, we are not able to deal with in what way we have to deal with our manolaya. Uh, thereby we are struggling with manolaya. And uh, as if it is a necessary thing uh, or it is a necessary thing, we think in, in both ways. Thereby we want to retain some manolaya forever. Then we safeguard some manalaya not to appear again and again. So in this way, we are struggling with ourselves, so struggling with the manalaya. So if you understand what what is coming, that has to go. If you understand the natural goal of manalaya, and uh, there is the understanding. Then then we give total freedom to the manalaya. When we give total freedom to the manalaya, the manalaya is freely coming and freely disappearing. Mm -hmm. And this is Manamasa? My, that is Manamasa. That is liberation itself. The liberation is the, itself is the uh, disappearing of Manamasa. Appearance and disappearance so is slow, the... Flowing. Uh, that is flowing. Flowing. But it's also should go after. I mean Manamasa. It's also pass away. Uh, right? Manamasa means the passing away. Mm -hmm. Passing away is mean uh, is the meaning of Manomasa. Manomasa is not at all a fixed state. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, if you consider a river, uh, we may think it is a fixed thing, but it is not a fixed thing. It is ever moving, ever moving uh, thing. So in this way, the Manomaya, Manomasa is a ever moving thing. The content of the Manomasa is Manolaya. The Manolaya is moving one by one. So then the totally it is known as Manomasa. So after enlightenment, there is only Manonasa? Yeah, everything. Manana is already there, but we give to a whole concern to that. We are concerned with the Manonasa. We are not interested upon Manolaya. But is it there, Manolaya? Without Manolaya, we cannot live. Exactly. Each and every moment, we have Manolaya. All our thinking, all our experiences, Manolaya. Mm -hmm. But we are not stuck with any Manolaya. Mm -hmm. Free flow. And with what comes after Mananasa? Does it come something after Mananasa? No, it is uh, already there. Appearance and disappearance. Uh, the disappearance is Mananasa. And both, uh, one, one, one after another it comes. Mm -hmm. Manolaya comes and disappears. When it disappears, this is known as Mananasa. Mm. When it is appears, it is uh, monolaya. Mm. So it's like the infinite process. Ah, infinite, uh, infinite happening. Happening. The usual spirituality, spiritual teachers, they, they will, they will tell you. They told me. First, you have to know who you are. And if you know who you are, then everything will be solved. Because you know, you will know that you are the infinite. You cannot be, you didn't, you were never born, you will never die. So it will take away <coughs> all the fears. And then you can live uh, freely in this world because you know that you are not this body, you know that you are not this mind, 
you know you are pure awareness, pure consciousness, or whatever name they want to give it. And this will give you freedom. This is how they teach. So what can you say about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indirectly they mean that, that if you, you have to understand like this, if you understand like this, that means then that mean that means you are the ocean. If you are if you think you are the ocean, then you don't mind the waves. So don't mind the waves means don't mind the consciousness, don't mind your experience. So you should not give importance to the experience. That is the meaning behind that. But uh, usually we take it as we have to know. reach. Yeah. We have to reach the we have state. To know. We have to experience. We experience the experience ourselves as the absolute. Mm. And from that uh, vantage point, you can no. come back to life. And now you always know that you are dead, and you can play with life. So they they ask they ask us to uh, experience the entire ocean as a wave. <laughs> wave cannot be a ocean. The ocean is the vast waveless thing, but uh, wave is a different thing as a portion. But uh, the, the wave has to contain the entire ocean. <laughs> we think like that because whenever we experience the uh, vast thing, whenever we experience the uh, the absolute thing, that means we convert them into manolaya. So you know, they, they, they mean to say uh, the Mano Nasa must be contained within the Manolaya. Manolaya is a limited thing. So it is a just appearance and disappearance. It is a momentary thing. The momentary thing cannot contain the four. Uh, but if you want to realize, but you can infer. But the inference is, is part of the Manolaya. You can infer through your Manolaya that uh, I am not this one, I am behind, behind that. Uh, so, we may infer like this. Because of the inference, we are not giving importance to the Manolaya. So, the, uh, then we give support for the uh, disappearance of Manolaya. So, the liberation, what you say, is the liberation does not come from experiencing ourselves as absolute, it comes from the conviction from the conclusion that we are the absolute and by that conviction we let everything flow as it is and like this so but here um, nothing I needed in the, in the level of that is in, in other way if you think like that nothing I need in the level of consciousness in the level of manolaya then you dismiss the manolaya so that is the meaning so the dismissal of manolaya, dismissal of consciousness, this all is, is important. This is the crucial thing. This is the crucial thing. And the other thing is uh, some sort of uh, device to reach ah. that. <laughs> Only a, a device. Ah. Ah. But they, they opposite, in opposite way, you have to confirm that you are the absolute. Yes. Um, Until you confirm that you are the absolute, you cannot, uh, ah. you will always have fears, you will always have oh. But here, uh, in other way, if you consider that nothing is real, that no consciousness is real, uh, no manolaya is real. Um, so in the area of manolaya, we cannot get a good thing, but everything is behind that. Then, then only we do not rely upon the manolaya. So we have to uh, remove the manolaya, we have to give total freedom to the manolaya. Actually, the freedom of manolaya is the highest thing. For that they think, we have to realize the absolute reality. Uh, but, uh, but we cannot realize the absolute reality. We can infer. We can infer something is behind that. In spite of Manolaya, something is there. Uh, there is no doubt. Uh, you, as Manolaya goes, everything does not go. So something comes and uh, because of the uh, other thing are wrong, some other Manolaya comes. Otherwise, if, uh, if we dismiss Manolaya, Realization is not possible. This is a realization. Okay. Not as uh, you know the. So when you know means uh, that means we contain the ocean into your wave. That we know means we make it as a manolaya. Mm -hmm. So what we feel is manolaya. Uh, Manonoisa cannot be a manolaya. 
So we cannot contain the manola and nasa into manola. Understand that Manolaya understand that the conclusion is Manolaya. Manolaya may say that I am it's a limited one. But what my base is limited. That alone we can infer. Not as an experience. Not as an experience. Just as an inference. No, we, can, we can infer. We can rightly infer. Intellectual knowledge. No, intellectual knowledge. So if the intellectual knowledge is good and assertive, it is conclusive, then it will work. So we need to work. In the case of Ramana, Nisarga Ramana, I am the absolute reality. It is only an inference. Meaning that as if he himself yes. experienced as if he is a absolute reality, uh, it gave you a wrong sense, uh, uh, wrong impression. Wrong impression. But they they all say that uh, uh, what happens after liberation, it's something they cannot describe. They try, but it's impossible to describe. So it's still some state of mind which which they simply they cannot describe. describe. <laughs> he has he has no capacity to describe. That's the meaning. So it is not at all an experience. Then, but uh, in that way we can describe. It is the mono. It is mono nasa. We, we can describe it as mono nasa. That is the description of it. But it is not at all an experience. If it is an experience, we can uh, describe. But it is not at all an experience. But at the same time, it is a dissolution of all experiences. It is a flowing of all experiences. We have to describe this way. And they also, uh, quite a few of them, say that uh, after liberation, uh, for instance in satsangs, the question comes, uh, the answer does not come from the, their own intellect, but it just flows like... Uh, from, from somewhere else. From the sky. <laughs> I, I don't want to, so to speculate all, about this, but so, they... So all thought comes in the, like that. You are not creating any thought. It comes on its own. All thought comes on its own. We are not creating any thought. It yeah, is no. for all. It is not for him. It is for all. It is comes from uh, some dark races. Some darkness it comes. Yeah. The... All thought comes like this. That's true, but still we are coming and asking you, not him, or not another one. We are asking the Guru to answer the questions and we trust that the, the answer is uh, it's, it's true. So, but it is true, or not because of so it is coming from the sky, but it is, a, it is an intellectual answer, anybody can answer. If you understand the thing, anybody can give you the same answer. So there is no specialty as I have imported something from the heaven or in this way. <laughs> so what's the importance of the Guru? So, but he, he, better, he has some better understanding. He has some better knowledge about the thing. So he shares his knowledge with the other thing, who has not such a kind of understanding. So that is the thing. He has already got... Um, and uh, in that... Uh, Understanding, he answers all questions. And he is responsible. He says, my knowledge is responsible. And with the help of his knowledge alone, his thoughts, his answer comes. His answers come from his knowledge, not from others, uh, other knowledge. His, uh, he, whatever we give answer, all our answer comes from our knowledge. If he got the knowledge, of some uh, idea of anything related to enlightenment or liberation, he he say he he said all the answers from that knowledge. The <laughs> It's not about me. It's about what they really say. They they say very so it's not not hidden. They say. If you ask them, I, I saw at least twice, 
uh, master saying that uh, they don't know from where the answer is. Muji says this often and he explains that he read two books in his whole life. So the answer, he said, he just prayed, God, you send me these people here, then give me uh, the words to, to answer their question. That's what he said. For example, if they are able to speak the knowledge which he does not know, then we may say he must have some it must have come from somewhere else. They they call it channeling. Mm -hmm. uh, call it? Ch it's it's called a channeling. Channel. People are able to let's call it a database, go database, they just connect to there and mm -hmm. then uh, they, they give some, some knowledge. Some mystical connection, that is different. But that connection, they may not give the real answer. So the, 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 the thing which has supplied the answer may not know the fact, may not know, but we need not uh, uh, think the thing which is giving the answer from somewhere in dark places is not a good one. Maybe a bad one or an unnamed enlightened one may be there. <laughs> it is the wrong <laughs> so wrong, they may all give the wrong answer. <laughs> but even the case of Jay Krishnamurti... So if I get a little bit devilish, I go up and... Make an action But in the case of Jay Krishnamurti, the heavenly powers uh, assumed that Krishnamurti's brother will not die. <laughs> but in, uh, in spite of his uh, uh, folk uh, telling, uh, his brother died in the <laughs> So it will be <laughs> so what we have to say like this. That was his uh, enlightenment point, that when, when this happened, well, then he got enlightened, he understood. Oh, yeah, yeah. But here, what is that? We did not rely on that. We, whatever may be in case of everybody, if we ask a question, then some answer will come from yourself. But you, can you say where, it, where, where from it is coming? It, it comes from the darkness of yourself some dark part of yourself. Because you say also in, uh, in your uh, uh, teaching and books that you now the, the intellect it develops itself and the highest point is in science. So you get the uh, information, you have memory and you can speak out of this. Uh, you, you read thousand books and you are a knowledgeable person. So whenever, for example, whenever you work out a pro problem, then you look at the problem, when you try to think about the problem, Thought comes on its own way. When the thought comes in a different way, you select something. But uh, each and every moment, some uh, some more, some thought comes from some uh, some dark places along. Uh, dark places. Dark dark place. Without any light, we can we, we are, because if any thought comes like that, uh, then only how we cannot know how it comes. Whenever it reaches the conscious level, then only we can understand some thought comes. Before that, how we do not know how it comes. Each and thought comes in this way. How it comes, we cannot say. Whenever it arises and reaches the level of consciousness, then only we recognize like this. So in this way, each and every moment, thought comes away, comes away from uh, some dark places. Uh, Dark places of our mind. Subconscious mind. Not subconscious mind, but in it's some, even deeper. Not, not, not. In the yeah. conscious level itself, some dark places is there. That yeah. is unconscious uh -huh. part of the subconscious mind. Some unconscious part of the conscious mind. So there so, is an unconscious part in the conscious mind. In the conscious mind. Because all our memory in the unconscious mind. Unconscious part of the conscious mind. So we have so many memory in our in our mind, in our conscious mind. But we cannot. Whenever we look there, we can have the memory one by one. But it is the stored. The the stored place is unconscious part. But it is in the conscious part. We can ourselves we can uh, recollect the memory. So it is a conscious part, mm -hmm. a, a conscious place. But it is unconscious portion of the conscious mind. So in this way, from the unconscious part of our conscious mind, all thought comes. Whether he is an ordinary person or he is an enlightened person, 
uh, or it is a profit you have got, maybe everything comes from the uh, dark place. 